If you have any information pertaining to this case, please contact the St. Tammany Parish Coroner's Office by telephone at 985-781-1150 or by email at info at stpcoroner.org. You may also contact the St. Tammany Parish Sheriff's Office by telephone at 985-898-2338. And you may also contact the LSU Faces Lab at 225-578-4761 or at 225-578-4775. On the 19th of June, 1986, at about 7.30pm, two fishermen spotted the nude body of a woman floating in the Lake Pontchartrain between the Interstate 10 and the US 11 bridges in Slidell, St. Tammany Parish, Louisiana. A white plastic bag had been placed over the woman's head which was secured by grey duct tape around her neck. Also tied to her neck was a red 22 pound weight, the type used in gyms, which was presumably used in an attempt to stop the body surfacing. It became apparent that the police were dealing with a homicide when the bag was removed from the head Several stab wounds on the woman's face and several gashes on her head were revealed. An autopsy determined that she'd been dead for one to two days and she died from asphyxia, most likely being suffocated by the bag around her head. A partial fingerprint was found on the tape around her neck which police believe belonged to the killer. Her body had been dumped in the lake not long after she died and she was likely dumped somewhere between Bayou Lacombe and the Wrigley's Pass. She was also 7 to 12 weeks pregnant at the time of her death. The woman was Caucasian and is thought to have been approximately 20 to 30 years old. She stood between 5 feet 2 inches and 5 feet 7 inches tall, and she weighed between 100 and 126 pounds. She had shoulder-length red or auburn hair, freckles, silicone breast implants at 200 cubic centimetres, a half-inch wide ring mark or tan line on her left ring finger, a 2.3 centimetre scar on her abdomen above her navel, a 1.5 centimetre circular scar on her right knee, a 1.2 centimetre scar on her right wrist, a previously fractured right hip which would have left her hospitalised for a while, possible prior plastic surgery performed on her nose, Good dental care with no cavities or fillings. Tooth number nine was missing post-mortem and all of her wisdom teeth were missing, though it is not known whether they had been extracted or if they were congenitally missing. Due to the state of decomposition, her eye colour could not be determined and authorities were only able to collect one complete fingerprint. At the time of her death, she had trace amounts of caffeine and alcohol in her system. There were no serial numbers on her breast implants, and no doctor ever came forward to say they had performed the surgery on her. Authorities were able to determine, however, that the implants had been manufactured by Cox of Hoff International. The manufacturers were only able to provide the information that they did not use serial numbers, and 200cc was a common size of implant to receive. They estimated that 500 to 700 doctors a year ordered the 200cc size. Ultimately, her implants seemed to lead to a dead end. The unidentified woman was well cared for and likely of a middle class upbringing. When nobody claimed her, the woman was buried without a ceremony in an unmarked pauper's grave in the Greenwood Cemetery in Slidell. In July 2003, police received an NCIC alert about a potential match to the unidentified woman. One Lisa Marie Sexton, a girl who went missing from Ohio in 1981 at the age of 14. Lisa last contacted her family in 1984, two years before the unidentified woman's body was pulled from the lake. The police thought that this lead was promising, but the problem was that they had no DNA or dentals to compare the unidentified woman to Lisa. The unidentified woman's grave was located and her body was exhumed in September 2003 to try and prove or disprove the potential match. The two women's dentals were compared and they did not match. To this day, Lisa Marie Sexton remains a missing person. The exhumation also resulted in a facial reconstruction of the unidentified woman being created, 
and with this reconstruction, police received two seemingly promising tips. Both tipsters said that the unidentified woman resembled a 20-year-old woman who had been missing from Jefferson Parish since 1986. This lead was followed until it was discovered that the missing woman was in prison when the unidentified woman's body was discovered. Therefore, she could not be the unidentified woman. It is believed that the unidentified woman may have been married due to the ring mark on her finger, and it's also thought likely that she was not local to the area in which she was found. Over the decades, several theories have come to light. I must preface this by saying that none of these theories have ever been confirmed. They are pure speculation and should not be taken as fact. One theory is that she may have been in a car accident prior to her death which explains her severely injured hip and possible facial reconstruction surgery. Another prominent theory is that she may have been killed by an abusive husband, since she is thought to have been married. The abusive husband may have isolated her from her family and or friends prior to her death, which could be why she may not have been reported missing. Her pregnancy may have been a motive for her murder. Another theory is that she may have been having an affair and when her husband found out about her affair, he killed her. She may have been killed when her husband or her lover found out that the fetus she was carrying was not his. Again, this is all speculation and none of these theories have ever been confirmed by law enforcement. Several missing people have been officially ruled out as being this decedent. Please check the description for a list of these rollouts. If you have any information pertaining to this case, that may aid in the identification of this woman and or her killer, the appropriate agencies for you to contact are listed at the beginning of this video.